In this video, I'd like to walk you through how you can use vCenter operations to troubleshoot a performance problem from initial symptoms all the way to complete resolution. In this example, let's say that a user calls in from the accounting department complaining about poor performance of one of their VMs. Since we know all accounting VMs start with the name accounting, we can go to the search window and type accounting, and that will give us a list of these VMs. In our case, there are only two, and in fact, we're interested in the App Prime server. When we select it, we notice that that VM becomes highlighted in addition to its parent and data center. If we select it, we'll notice that its workload is particularly high, above 100. Its health is degraded, but its capacity is OK. Just using these high-level indicators, we can quickly determine two things. A, some part of its demand is greater than its capacity, and B, using health, this is not normal. So something has changed. So let's drill into the details to figure out what might be going on. In this view, you'll notice that we have the same three different high-level metrics here that we had in the previous view. We have workload, health, and capacity. Again, we see that workload is particularly high. If you look directly below that, you can see that workload is broken down into its four constituent components consist consisting of CPU, memory, disk, and network. In our case, disk and network are virtually unused. CPU is pretty low, but memory is actually very high. And indeed, we can see it's the memory value that's causing workload to be so high. So why is memory high? What might be going on here? Well, if we take a look to the right, we'll see a breakdown of CPU and memory. There's three key concepts that you need to understand when looking at these charts. The first is demand, the second usage, the third capacity. Demand is simply a measure of what this VM wants. Usage is what it gets, and capacity is the most that it can get. We can use these three metrics to reason about whether a VM is getting what it needs or not. We can see for CPU that its demand is slightly higher than its usage. That means this VM wants more than it's actually getting. Since we see that demand is below its capacity, it probably means that it's a population pressure problem on the host. There's a bunch of other VMs that also want CPU. But CPU isn't our main culprit here. Memory is. So let's take a look at memory. Here we see we have two different views of memory. Why do we have two different views, and what does that mean? We have VM memory, which looks at the configured amount of memory for that VM. And here we can take memory, demand, and usage into account in making sure that our VM is correctly sized. We see in these cases that Actually, both of these numbers are much below our configured memory size. So we see that, OK, this VM is properly sized. It's not a problem. ESX memory, on the other hand, tells you how much physical RAM this VM wants and is getting. In our case here, we can see that the physical RAM is demanding 780 megabytes, but it's only getting 625. So why might that be? Why does it want more than it's able to get? Could it be a population pressure problem? Let's scroll down and see. Well, if we look at the parent, we see that the parent has a pretty low workload. So more than likely, the parent object, in this case the ESX host, is not contending for memory. Thus. It's not a problem of having too many VMs or VMs that want too much memory on this host. Maybe it's a problem with the VM itself. Let's check if its limit is set properly. For that, we can dig even further deeper 
into our All Metrics tab. The All Metrics tab lists every stat that VC Ops collects for this object. Some of these stats come from VC, others are derived by our product. In this case, we want to check out memory. And if we scroll down, we'll see that we have the VM limit stat. We can double click on it to bring it up over here. And we see something interesting here. We see that this limit is set to 524 megabytes. So why would a limit be set to 524 megabytes? It's curious. Perhaps it's the limit that's restricting the amount of usage that this VM can get. Indeed, its limit is 524 megabytes, plus we can look at the overhead memory for that VM. It's 62 megabytes, <clears throat> plus a little bit of extra, and we get somewhat of the usage here. So we can see that the usage is actually being limited by the memory limit. So in this case, the remediation is to go into VC to remove the limit setting from this VM or to increase it, and thus this VM will no longer be having a performance problem. It'll be able to get the amount of physical RAM that it needs. So you can see that we quickly went from a high-level overview of the system where you could reason in simplistic terms about what was going on down to the next level of detail, which identified the resource that was constrained, down to the final level of detail, where you could actually look at specific metrics and analyze what those metrics meant and what effect they might be having on this VM. So vCenter Operations allows you to go from this high level down to the details simply and easily in an iterative approach to allow you to quickly troubleshoot performance problems.